restrictions are necessary on our roads? Well, without these restrictions, our roads would wear out under the traffic using them and soon would be reduced to muddy dirt roads. Two inevitable forces cause streets and highways to deteriorate. Traffic loads and natural environment. The one we can control somewhat is traffic. How much does this vehicle damage this road? This one. This one. Let's discuss the implications of vehicle axle loads and arrangements on how long pavements last before some maintenance is necessary. The purpose of this presentation is to show how pavements are affected by vehicle axle loads. Arrangement of vehicle axles and implications of weight on roads, streets, and highways will be discussed. This presentation is sponsored by the Minnesota Local Road Research Board and has been prepared as part of Project 645, entitled Research Implementation by St. Paul Technical Vocational Institute. The economy of an area depends upon adequate transportation systems to move goods or products from their source to a market. In most parts of Minnesota, highways, roads, and streets are the primary arteries which make the movement of goods possible, and trucks are the vehicles which must be used for this transport. Such goods as timber, sugar beets, wheat, iron ore, and manufactured products must be moved as part of the commerce for the state. The design of highways, roads, and streets is based on many factors, including soil type, or strength, traffic, and climate. In Minnesota, asphalt pavements are designed to the thickness required to keep the pavement in a condition serviceable to the public over a given design period, usually about 20 years. Why not design for more than 20 years? We design for overlay or rehabilitation after 20 years because environmental effects will usually require maintenance then regardless of traffic. However, if more or heavier traffic loads use the road than were expected, the road wears out sooner. The weight of the axle loads are what wear out a road, not just the number of cars or trucks. So the greater the loads, the sooner the road wears out. For example, 2,500 cars put the same load on a road as one legally loaded truck. And one overloaded truck may be as harmful as two or three legally loaded trucks. The ability of a road to carry loads depends on its strength. The strength is dependent on the thickness of the pavement and the soil under the pavement. In the spring, the ability of a road to carry loads is usually lowest. As the frost leaves in the spring, the soil becomes soft and loses strength and its ability to support the loads. This results in the restrictions for loading we see each spring. Later in the year, the soil gets stronger until it reaches its greatest strength and is able to carry the design loads. The pavement design chart used by engineers in Minnesota yields thicknesses based on different soil strengths and traffic loads and shows the pavement thickness required. Yes, pavement design is complicated. One must consider the number and weights of axle loads expected, soil strength, strength and thickness of layers used, and how long the pavement must last. Let's look at a few aspects of pavement life. First, let's talk about fatigue. When a pavement breaks up, it is usually a case of fatigue failure. This means that a pavement deteriorates due to many applications of loads. One application of a legal or design load will not ruin or fail the pavement by itself. For example, if you bend a piece of metal once, it won't break. But if it is bent many times, it may eventually break. The number of times it takes to break the metal also depends on how far it is bent. If it is bent only slightly, it will take very many bends in order to fatigue and break the metal. If it is bent more each time, it will take fewer bends to break it. Pavement fatigue is measured as the number and weight of axle loads needed to make the pavement unserviceable. If each axle load is increased, there will be fewer applications before the road breaks up. If axle loads are decreased, the pavement will carry more vehicles before it will fail. One type of pavement failure due to loads is cracking of the pavement surface. After a given number of applications of loads causing tension in the bottom of an asphalt pavement, cracking will occur in the surface. 
This is similar to what happens to the metal. The stretch in the bottom of the asphalt can be reduced for a given soil by either making the pavement section thicker or by reducing the wheel load. The thicker or stronger the pavement, the less it bends under a given load. The less it bends, the longer it lasts. Another form of pavement failure is rutting due to loading in the wheel paths. This can be caused by too much stress on the underlying soil. Heavier wheel loads are transmitted through the pavement to the soil below. The thicker the pavement, the less load on the soil. Therefore, weaker soils need a thicker or stronger pavement. The stress on the soils underlying a pavement can also be reduced by reducing the wheel load. Fatigue damage in a pavement depends on the weight and arrangement of axle loads. The Ashto Road Test in Ottawa, Illinois, is the primary source of good research information on the relative effects of axle loads and arrangements on different pavements. During this $30 million road test, trucks with fixed axle weights were driven around sections of road constructed in loops about one mile long. There were five loops containing about 460 pavement sections with traffic of typical single or tandem axles. Over one million loads were applied over a two-year-plus period on each section. This is a chart summarizing some of the results of the Ashto Road Test. Let's discuss some of what was learned about pavement fatigue and truck axle loads. The chart shows that the damage a truck causes increases very rapidly as axle weight increases. The damage increases much faster than the loads increase. For instance, one nine-ton axle causes about 10 times more damage than a five-ton axle. A tandem axle has eight tires arranged on two axles, one in back of the other under the truck. A 32,000-pound load is the legal maximum for a tandem axle. A 20,000-pound tandem axle is only about one-sixth as destructive as a 32,000-pound tandem axle. An overweight tandem axle carrying 40,000 pounds causes six times the damage of a legal 32,000-pound tandem axle and 36 times the damage of a 20,000-pound tandem axle load. In this case, there is about a 36-fold increase in damage effect for doubling the axle load. The total pavement fatigue effect of a whole truck can be determined by adding up the effect of its individual axles using relative damage numbers discovered at the road test. By doing this, we can look at the relative effect of various load combinations. To illustrate the comparisons, we will assume for simplicity that one 18,000 pound or nine ton load on a single axle causes one unit of damage on a pavement. A semi-trailer truck with a five ton front steering axle and two single nine ton load axles loaded to the maximum permissible loading would use up 2.1 damage units carrying a payload of 16,000 pounds. If the same truck were loaded to 10 ton axle loads rather than nine ton, the payload would increase 25%, but pavement fatigue damage would increase almost 50% to 3.1. If the same truck were illegally overloaded to 12 ton axle loads, it will cause twice the damage as one with 10 ton axles, almost three times the damage as one with nine ton axles, but only increase the payload by 75% to 20,000 pounds. The pavement fatigue damage goes up drastically for a relatively small increase in payload. If tandem axles are used rather than single axles for the load axles, much greater payloads are possible with no increase in pavement damage. A legal axle load of 32,000 pounds can be carried while causing only 1.9 fatigue damage units. Payload is increased three times to 44,000 pounds with damage actually reduced about 10%. Going to 34,000 pound tandem axles, legal on roads where a gross weight of 80,000 pounds is allowed, increases fatigue damages about 26% and provides only a 14% payload increase. Other factors, such as fuel savings and fixed costs, may help balance this apparently poor bargain. This is a tridim axle. It has 12 wheels on three axles arranged trailing one another under the truck. Recent research has shown that a 42,000-pound evenly loaded tridim axle 
will cause only one unit of fatigue. It will cause about the same fatigue damage effect as an 18,000 pound single axle. The load must be distributed the same on each of the 12 wheels in the Tritem or more fatigue will occur. A truck with an 80,000 pound gross load on a Tritem and a tandem axle would cause only two thirds the fatigue damage of a truck with just tandems. It's possible to do less damage to the pavement with tridems and carry about the same payload. To summarize, one, the pavement fatigue damage increases as the payload in tons increases. Two, pavement fatigue damage is reduced by using axle arrangements which spread the load out significantly. Three, for each type of vehicle, the fatigue damage increases more rapidly with increased axle load then does the corresponding increase in payload. The design of asphalt pavements is based upon the total number and weight of axle loads over the life of the road. These determine the total fatigue damage that must be provided for. Pavements must be made thick enough or strong enough to limit fatigue damage expected under the expected truck traffic if the desired pavement life is to be obtained. Engineers can make a prediction of fatigue damage for a 20-year design period using these data. A prediction of the total traffic, truck type distribution, and average effects of the trucks, along with an anticipated increase in traffic over the design period, are used. This table shows a typical set of engineering calculations which represent actual traffic data from a given road. Only 13 Type 8 trucks daily out of the total traffic of 400 plus per day, cause about one half the total fatigue damage to the road in this particular case. The strength of a pavement varies throughout the year and is lowest during the spring thaw period for most conventional pavements. If the soil is granular, the pavement does not lose as much strength during the spring period. A strength test can be run during any non-frozen part of the year and used to estimate the springtime strength. Average ratios of strength for different seasons have been determined by measurements taken over the past 15 years. In Minnesota, the Benkelman beam deflection test or the road radar are used to determine the strength of a pavement. These tests measure the amount the pavement bends under a given load. If the amount of deflection can be reduced, especially in springtime, the life of the pavement will be increased. The deflection can be reduced by either reducing the load or increasing the thickness or strength of the pavement. Because of variable underlying soils, field conditions, and pavement materials along a road, a strength test is very important to an engineer when determining how much axle weight is most appropriate for a given road. We have seen that if the level of loading on the pavement is increased throughout the year, the pavement will not fail immediately due to the heavier load but the time until the section will need significant maintenance is shortened. This means that maintenance must be programmed sooner, resulting in a higher annual cost of the road. For example, if the general level of loading was increased by 10 to 11 percent, such as from a 9 ton to a 10 ton single axle load, the increased wheel loading would cause about a 50 percent increase in damage. If an inch and a half of asphalt overlay costs about $20,000 per mile and it were expected to last 20 years, this would represent an annual investment of $1,000 per year per mile. For the increased damage of 50%, the expectancy is reduced to 13 years. The cost per year is then more than $1,500. This represents more than a 50% increase in annual maintenance costs. If a pavement section is relatively strong, it may be possible to increase the loading without significantly increasing the annual costs because the predicted life may be longer than will be used up by traffic on the road. The same may be true if the traffic is very low on a given road. These types of determinations can only be made by measuring the strength of the road and making a good estimate of the traffic that will be using that road. A weak road can only be made capable of handling heavier loads for the total design life by increasing pavement thickness or rebuilding. If a weak road is not upgraded before heavier loads are allowed on it, 
it will deteriorate faster than original design expectations. The final decision on heavier loads should be based on how much less life the road will have. Those responsible for keeping the road in a usable or serviceable condition must decide when the additional money should be put into the road, now or later. Actual determinations of these predictions can only be made knowing the strength of the road along with some knowledge of the traffic expected on it. The benefits in terms of annual savings to the user must be balanced against the projected increase in maintenance dollars to keep the road in a serviceable condition.